viewers, and a warm welcome to Business Summit. I'm your host, Eunice Ferguson-Odate. Export-oriented development underpins the government of Ghana's economic policy. The government's foreign trade policy also seeks to promote private sector-led export development. However, the majority of exporters in Ghana belong to the MSME sector, with the attendant challenges including the lack of access to affordable financing, amongst others, which can make Ghana's exports more competitive on the international market. Well, we are privileged to have with us in the studio the acting CEO of the Export Development and Investment Fund, Mr. Ejabing NGJ, who will help us with some critical information about support and interventions within the export sector to promote exporters. Please stay tuned while we go for a quick breather. Welcome back. Well, um, Mr. Jabing, we want to find out from you what the mandate of EDIF is. EDIF, or Export Development and Investment Fund, was set up by an Act of Parliament, 5A2, in 2000, but it became operational in July 2001. And the main mandate of EDIF is to support the development and promotion of Ghana's export trade. How do you support export development and promotion in Ghana? We have two main facilities through which we support this export development and promotion in Ghana. According to the Act, we have the credit facility and we have the development and promotion facility, which we call the grant. So we support micro, small, medium-scale enterprises through these two facilities. When, if it is the grant or the development and promotion, we don't support limited liability companies. We support groups, associations, cooperatives, government entities, research institutions. But when it is credit, everyone is, a bit, is just a uh, is allowed to apply through your bank. We don't uh, fund it direct to the individuals, limited liability companies. We do that through various banks, which we call DFIs. I mean, why this uh, discrimination, so to speak? You see, the money, if we are giving to you as grant, we want to increase the production base of the country. It's better for groups and associations to come together. We'll get to the steps where we, sh we show you how to get access. Access. Right. But then we just don't want individuals to get grants, free money. But if a project is viable, you go to the bank, they assess you, and it is viable, you can produce to get profit. Because there are certain things, if individuals are allowed to do it, they won't do it on commercial basis to export. Okay. So that is the essence where we have the grant aspect to pr just support the rural folk, the poor people who can't even have access to funds. You know, the main thing that we're just dealing with here is the uh, inadequate uh, capital. So if we can get support, capital support, or financial support for the half-nots, then it allows them to come together. You remember, divided we fall. We fall. Uh -huh. So we want to make sure that they form cooperatives, they have associations, they have organizations. It's a government entity, it's a research institution. It's not profit-oriented, they do the research. We support those because Unlike the advanced countries, in Ghana here, individuals do not or don't want to invest their money in research. So that is why we come in here to help research. Research into settlements, research into animal feed, research into other type of productions that will help on a large scale for export. For groups of people, mm -hmm. farmer groups and other cooperatives, what specific activities are, are, you, are we talking about here in terms of support? Ghana is predominantly an agricultural production country. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about farmer-based groups, remember we have various commodities that people export, ranging from soya bean, peanuts, chili pepper, yams. We haven't supported so much in yams. Those are the non-traditional non exports? Purely non-traditional uh, support. Ex okay. Yeah, because uh, the way the law uh, is set up, we are concentrating on the non-traditional export because when you get to the traditional export, we have timber marketing board, 
we have cocoa marketing the board. Already the institutions are already there managing them. That's why we have to concentrate on the non-traditional exports. So that with that one, we, have, we can have a broader base for the country to earn more foreign exchange. When it comes to, let's say, the groups, and it's a, it's a farmer based, to produce more, you need to mechanize. Mm -hmm. So we provide something like tractors, we provide seedlings, we provide, uh, I mean, improved seedlings. Uh, we decide insecticide, cut losses, holes, at least for the first two years. And if you are a serious group and you are supported for the first two years, with Should the profit that you make, there. you have to be able to take, just take up from there. So all these inputs come at no cost at all to the groups? You see, it comes at no cost at all to the groups. We take all this, but what happens is we don't give you the cash. That is why there's the misconception among some uh, certain people. You see, you go in there, they're excited to yes. get into farming, mm -hmm. hoping that the money is coming <laughs> to them. But then you just end up, once approval is made, we go to the sales how to approve it. Once approval is made, the group involved, you bring all the individu uh, the individual, the, the, no, no, you bring the invoices for the items that you need. Oh. If it is a tractor, you go and just choose a tractor that you want to use, mm -hmm. whether it's Messi Ferguson, Ford, uh, any other tractor that you want, that the dealer is here. You bring us the invoice. We first call to check about the price Your that you brought, yeah. and then we pay them direct. So all you do is that we tell you, you are thin is ready, go and pick it. Sit, relax, pick up straight the goods and that get is going. That is straightforward. If it is in set aside, let's say we get invoice from Agrimat. Mm -hmm. We pay Agrimat direct. And then you go and pick your insert aside and other things and you take to your farm. We always give you miscellaneous, which will help you to convey the terms to the farm site. So does that also include technical assistance in the form of, you know, um, extension services and helping them to, you know, grow their crops properly? and all that? You see, normally it's supposed to include that. But what we see here is that once you're a farmer, you see, before we can even support you, you ought to have been a farmer. You ought to have even started farming at least one year. Mm. You ought to have been an expert. So we know that you have all these. But sometimes there are certain commodities we get you with technical assistance. Funds are made available for, for technical assistance training. That one, the board insists on it, that you just don't leave them in limbo. Mm -hmm. Get something for them. If it is, let's say, soya bean, if it is, say, mango, if it is uh, pepper, we need to know what chemicals do we have to use? How often do we use it? You have to teach them. So some capacity is built capacity along the Capacity building is out there. Mm. We send people to go around. And even this year, for instance, we're trying to get some national service personnel, about one or two, who are very good in agri to go around the farmers and make sure that they are doing the right thing, farm, good farm practices. Yes. So are there in specialized areas? Have you got uh, maybe specialized regions where you want people to come? Or it doesn't matter which part of the country the association or the group of people are coming from? Our activities is just nationwide. Everywhere you go. Because of that, I know everywhere in Ghana. Wow. We travel to all the places to see projects before we get them approved. So uh, you also talked about the credit facility component. Yes. Can you give us you know, an indication of what goes into that and yes. who qualifies to to have access to that you see, facility? With the credit facility, EDIF does not give the money straight away. We pass them through DFI, designated financial institution. Almost all the banks in Ghana mm. uh, will have registered with us or have signed up with us. And then we have two non-banking financial or three non-banking financial institutions, ESM Guarantee, Export Finance Company, and then uh, Emprete Ghana Limited. They have all signed up with us. We give them their money to own land to the farmers or to the uh, uh, associations. The no, not the associations, the companies. limited liability companies. But what we see here is I see our interest rate is the lowest in the country. Oh, I want to know about it. Yes. What is the rate? Our interest rate is 12.5%. That's below the prime rate. Lower than the prime rate. And you see, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know about EDIF. And uh, I will take this medium to let the people know that we give our monies out at 12.5%. And, percent. and uh, when banks are giving theirs for 30%, 32%, and other things, ours is. And you see, what happens is that we take the 2.5%, and, and the banks that are disbursing our funds take the 10%. Okay. Uh -huh. So once we do that, the type of things that we fund, for instance, machinery, working capital, and then even refinancing. For instance, you go to your bank, you are given an interest rate of, let's say, 28, 32%. And if 
you can assess a different fund at twelve and a half percent. Want to refinance the loan refin for a lower interest for a lower interest rate, and for, uh, they are they are doing that. Okay. Yes. Well, viewers, you just heard him. There's credit facility available for exporters. We'll go on a quick break. When we return, we'll take a good look at the credit facility again. Please don't go away. Welcome back to Business Summit. We're just discussing the credit facility under EDIF, and we want to take up from where we stopped off. Well, Mr. Javing, tell us a bit more. You were talking about how you give it out to the banks to all lend to exporters. Can you please pick up from there, and then we look at the steps that one will have to take in order to access the credit facility. All you do is go to talk to your bank. They have the forms. They give you forms, three forms. You fill all the forms. You keep one for yourself. You give one to the bank, and you bring one to EDIF. So the bank will go through their normal process of assessing a project for funding. So obviously you have to add your project plan or business plan to it. That it's is. Not just a matter you have you fill the form and add all everything: the business plan, your cash flow, everything. Your financial statement for three years, and then you just submit it alongside to the uh, bank. But there are two other conditions that you have to meet. That's when the forms come to it if we look at for. One, the project should be export oriented. You're going to produce for export. Mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, the company should be a majority owned Ghanaian. It should be either a hundred percent Ghanaian or fifty one percent to forty nine. So the majority, majority share should, should, holder be, a should Ghanaian, be Ghanaian. A Ghanaian. If you meet these two conditions, you're on the right way. Okay. So once you fill the forms and you give it to your bank, your bank will do all the necessary groundwork due diligence, make sure the project is viable because one, the banks bear the credit risk, not EDIF. Mm. So they will make sure it's a viable project. And then when they finish with it, they will send it, uh, the forms to uh, EDIF. Then EDIF also will just do our own brand, uh, background check, visit the company, the premises everywhere, anywhere in Ghana at all that the project is cited, will travel there to meet with the company know the show the shareholders the directors and everything know that to ascertain the truth to ascertain so the same the truth thereof and then thereafter we the uh, <coughs> the secretariat will process the application for the board's consideration so the board will come and meet the uh, take a decision on it once it is approved the funds are transferred to the bank that applied on your behalf and then the bank will inform the customer that such such an amount that you applied has been approved. You see, the interesting thing that most business uh, companies are not aware of is that the maximum that we can give mm -hmm. is three million dollars, CD equivalent, to an individual company. To an individual company, three million dollars. Three million dollars, CD equivalent, equivalent of that. CDs. That's that's quite a lot. Yes, but a lot of companies don't know. They are not taking advantage of it. So, so are the banks also lending to? to the companies at 10 percent you know they give it 12 and half percent to the customer mm -hmm. but we give it to them they take interest rate of 10 percent we only give they only give us two and half percent okay yeah so far have you experienced any challenges and do you have any success stories you want to share yes so far when it come to the successes a lot of companies have gained financial support from us without which maybe they Would will they have, have just been uh, just folded up if you talk about Ghana nuts at Techimine, Bosbel in Tamale, Atina food at Tema, a lot of when the PSI started, all the PSIs were beneficiaries. Uh, you talk at, about uh, Maroc tuna export, cocoa processing has been a major beneficiary. I see. So is it, it, it cuts across. All sectors. It, all as sectors. As long as it's an export yes. oriented company. Once it's an export oriented. To date, from 2002, ADIF have supported totaling 36 million Ghana cities. But when it comes to credit, about 200 projects have been supported across board, across the whole country. And that runs to about 89 million 820,000. That is almost about 90 million, million Ghana cities. So ADIF within that short time in its existence, six for about years. seven, six, seven years, mm -hmm. we've given us so much. But it's unfortunately, little is known about us. So there's more to share. There's more to so share. So people yes. come to EDIF, access the funding, support your export, become more competitive 
on the market. And let's Ghana fly. Fly the, the, the Ghana fly really flag really high. You couldn't have said any better. That is all there is to it. Because if you need help, you see, apart from that, there are some other sprinter groups that we also support, like Phage, uh, uh, Ex G Export Promotion Council, other entities. We have supported Minari, Ghana Atomic Energy. You know, since first president set up oh. the atomic energy, yes. their cobalt, their irradiation facility is almost virtually down. Last year, we gave them almost about $8 billion. Mm. to make sure that was partly grant, part, uh, partly credit to put up to shape so that irradiation and some commodities can get long shelf life. Oh. We've done that. Research institution, you go to Legon Crops Research Institute, we, we are all over the place trying to make Ghana a better place to live in, to get more, to export more. Okay. Now, the, finally, I mean, with all this support in the system, it should culminate into some success. Can you tell us, you know, one or two things that have happened. How has this whole thing impacted on, on the economy? Is it possible to really tell whether it's impacted one way or the other in terms of the volumes of trade, for example, exports that are moving in from the country as a result of some of this support, you know, that, that, yes. that has gone to the sector? Yes. You see, before 2000 or by the, two, the year 2001, before it is all set up, Ghana's export revenue from non-traditional export was about $469 million dollars. Dollars for the whole year. But for up to 2008, the export volume, uh, value from exports, for, from non-traditional exports, has exceeded the $1 billion mark. One billion it's more than mark. tripled. Exactly. And apart from that, it is even, it is, if you look at the people who have been put to jobs, who have been put to work, who are able to carry on with their everyday activities, is enormous and with time we are going to just make sure that we just put value to all these and s make sure that we know actually what is it that EDIF has done. What is your final word to exporters? To exporters who are not yet well organized. The advice is get organized, join groups like FAGE which is Federation of Association of Ghanaian Exporters, make contact with Ghana Export Promotion Council sign up with VPEG if you're producing vegetables and through this bigger group you can get financial assistance that is for the grant aspect. On the other hand if it is credit get organized get your books in order approach your bank if not or you're far away come to the head office of uh, or the offices of EDIF and then we'll give you the guidelines to go through because there's a cheaper funds for you to just get access to in order to uh, export more for Ghana to benefit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jabing, for spending time with us. Thank we are you. grateful for your appearance on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, viewers, you've heard quite a bit from EDIF. There's a lot of support out there for exporters. Coming up on the Doing Business in Ghana segment are more interventions. But before we go, we want to acknowledge our supporters. Ali Ghana for my hair and makeup, True Words for my outfit, and Mobilia showroom for this beautiful IKEA furniture. Thank you, viewers. Keep watching Business Summit, and bye-bye. This is Athena Foods Limited at Tema in the Greater Accra region. Producers of world-class health-promoting fruit juices, mainly for export. Employing about 100 people, it produces single-strength organic pineapple juice, single-strength organic orange juice, and conventional pineapple and orange concentrates. These products are packaged in aseptic aluminum bags and then into steel drums lined with plastic bags in accordance with high international standards. Its state-of-the-art machinery and quality of products has made it very competitive on the international market. However, this came under threat when it had difficulty with part of its machinery. Then it sought EDIF's assistance in the form of a medium-term loan in 2003 to fix it. It also got working capital to enable it meet its orders, and Athena is reaping the benefits. 
it if came in at appropriate time, because I think in, in, to a large extent, when we do, when we talk about financing, some of these issues that I'm talking about, later issues, we not, we do not anticipate them that well, uh, for for various reasons. And so you find that the money that you started with, even if you got some loan from a bank, a lot of times you find that hey, it's not enough. It gets to be the working capital situation. And in our case, that's when EDIF came in. We had market, we had the orders, we had good product, but we didn't have enough fruit, money to buy the fruits. And EDIF came in at the appropriate time, gave us money, and the results are just wonderful. These drums of Athena quality concentrates are Germany bound. These are some of the finished products Athena's clients abroad process the concentrates into and export worldwide. Athena projects to increase production of organic juice to 25,780 metric tons and conventional concentrates to 1,232 metric tons between 2003 and 2007 and bring in tens of millions of dollars in foreign exchange. Mr. Tony Mensah, Chief Executive Officer of Athena Foods, is so happy with the EDIF assistance that he thinks others must benefit. EDIF, as it is now, is even going through the banks. We were fortunate to go with uh, National Investment Bank. It's a development bank that works with you and tries to educate, especially SMEs, educate. They've been doing this for quite a while. So that aspect of the EDIF grant, because you can get the money and waste it, but if you are guided, to use the money and use it fruitfully, then, you know, you grow and your bank has grow, it grows. So I think it's a good relationship and I can, I would, yes, recommend it to any company like mine.